And during that time, there's only one interview I did. I used to host an interview show called Hanging With. I don't know if anybody remembers it, but it was it was a lot of fun. And it was every kind of music from one day Melon Camp to one. And I really, even though I'm a rock and metal guy at heart, I really love talking to all these different artists, alternative, R&B, whatever, because I can talk to anybody. And uh, there's only one interview I did in maybe 100 in the years I was there, more than 100, that to this day has never aired. And the guest was Zach Wild. And it was Zach Wild when he was drinking. When when he, when he was drinking heavily. Well, he can't drink now because if he drinks he dies. Seriously, he has a, he's a condi- he will if Zach drinks, he's dead. It's as simple as that. And he it's you know, no better way to get sober than you're told if you drink you die. And that's what happened to Zach. Um, and he's been sober now for a while. He he's did enough damage he cannot touch alcohol, and he doesn't. I just saw him. He's doing great. But back then, it's what led to where he is now. And uh, he, my God, I mean, I've known Zach for years since before he was Zach Wild. You know, he's a guy on the Jersey club scene playing with bands. And uh, he came in that day and... We told him to get there at 3 o'clock or something, and he showed up at, like, noon because he hadn't even gone to bed the night before. And we, I was, again, remember, this was when I was doing all kinds of music, and part of my job was to introduce videos, not necessarily a guest. So I'm in, I'll never forget this. I'm in the studio, and I'm wearing, like, you know, not looking like a slob like I always look. I actually had a nice shirt on, and they dressed me. And I'm sitting there... And I'm looking at the camera, and this, you know, that's all scripted stuff. Here's what you're introducing, say it. And the video I'm introducing was from Mariah Carey. And I, I, it's like 12.30. I had another hour of these sort of things, and I had a lunch break, and then Zach was coming in. And I'm there, and the producer's on one hand. is like, okay, get ready for Mariah Carey video on three, two. And I'm like... All right, so coming up next on VH1 Classic, get ready for Dream Lover by Mariah Carey. It's coming up next, right? Hey, I'm just doing my job, you know? I'm happy to be on TV. All of a sudden, from the control room, I hear a click, and I hear, Captain Chuck, what are you doing in there talking about that crap? I'm going to kick your ass. And I'm like, it's like the voice of God. I'm like, what is this? Yeah, uh, what, what's going on here? And uh, the, do- the door to the studio opens. Like, literally, it's, it, all, it should have been like a flash bomb of smoke. And here he is with the vest and the chains, and he comes stomping in right in the- And my producer, who was, let's just say, more in the Mariah Carey world of fan, being a fan, uh, was horrified. And, like, and he comes stomping in, big hug, he's stinking and drinking, like, Let's do this, man. I'm not going to, there's children here. I'm not going to curse, but he's like, you know, let's just do this. What are you talking about this Mariah Carey stuff? And he was like enraged. I go, Zach, you're not supposed to be here for another couple hours. And he's like, just do it now. You can do this garbage later. So, you know, I'm cleaning it up big time. And uh, you have you have to remember, there's, there's a whole group of producers who... They don't really know Zach Wild, and they're like, they're like, what's going on? Like security, whatever. And of course, it wasn't just Zach. It was like his BLS crew, you know, trailing him behind him, dropping beer bottles and stuff. It was unbelievable. And I know Zach, so it was like I was in, caught in this really awkward position because here's a friend of mine, and I know how Zach is. And then on the other hand, I still have to work with these people who are horrified right now. So. I say to Zach, I said, um, the producer came over and said, listen, um, we're not ready for you. If you could just come back at your scheduled time at 3 o'clock, that would be fine. And, you know, it's just like, oh, well, where can I go? Where, where? I know where I'll go. To the bar. <laughs> so he went even, went away for a couple hours, came back at his scheduled time, even more out of his mind. First thing he started doing is rearranging the set pulling stuff off the wall, putting it on the table, all this stuff that had strategically been placed there by, like, you know, the art people, the set designer. I don't like... 
boom, just take this off and just running crazy through the place. And then, and then we're finally in a place where we're ready to roll for this interview. And it was just, it, so much had happened at that point. I'm like, oh my God, this is just going to be a nightmare, but let's just try to do it. So we're sitting there and here he is. He insisted all his friends be in the shot. So you see just random people walking around in the background. And, um, you know, it's like three, two, and I'm like, all right, so uh, Eddie Trunk here at VH1 Classic, and I'm uh, joined by my good friend Zach Wild. The Black Label Society just put out a new album called Mafia that's really cool. Hey, Zach, good to see you. And he just looks at me like this. And he turns around, turns around, he, and he looks, he looks at my butt, and he goes, Why have you been banging my wife? <laughs> cut, cut, cut. The producer, the Mariah Carey guy comes running. What, what? And from there, it just progressed into a zillion times more offensive stuff. It was like, reset the shot, reset the lights. No, I'm going to be it was just like, cut. Okay, Zach, so tell me about the album Mafia. Who cares? My wife said you were there in the room while I'm on the road. Why does my son look like you? Like, <laughs> cut, 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 cut. And then, then the last part of this story that I'll never forget is we try this. The record company guy, by the way, who's trying to sell this new record is freaking out, shaking in the corner. Guy was like 25, his first gig, and he's assigned Zach. And he's shaking, doesn't know what to do. And I'll never free. And my boss for the TV network's in the corner. And he's livid. And uh, the, the, the producer, the 25 year old kid, no, the 25 year old kid from the label comes up. And we're about to do the take for like the 10th time. And he gets up and he grabs this is like a little frail kid, you know, just probably his first label job. And he goes over and he, he pulls Zach's vest and he goes, Excuse me, Mr. Wild. Um, <laughs> will you just step aside so I can talk to you for a minute? And I just saw Zach just change from happy to. You telling me to step aside? What am I, your kid? And the kid just cowered and ran out, and that was it. So at this point, it was just all hands on deck. Get what we could get from him. But at the end of the interview, we were there for a couple hours. It was, that was it. It was over. It was uh, never to be aired to this day, never to be seen to this day. And I, I would, you know, back then it was a totally different tone for the channel. So what we do, one of the things I love about doing that metal show now, as opposed to back then, is back then I couldn't really be me. I was told how to talk, what to say, what to do. The beauty of that metal show is it's really me. I mean, that's really, we, we're, not, we're not censored. We can say and feel how we want. So I would love to, and I just had an idea, to have VH1 find that tape in their archives. And that's a, that's a, that's a special right there. <laughs> that's a, that thing should run on a loop because that's a special. Yeah, I mean, that's a Christmas special or something. I don't know what, no, Christmas might not be appropriate, but... Um, <laughs> And then, and then we went out drinking afterwards. What else? We were done working. I thought I was fired because I'm laughing hysterically. My boss, is, my boss wants to ban Zach from ever coming in and is mad at me because I'm laughing. And I'm like, I'm screwed here no matter what because either Zach's going to kick my ass. Everyone wanted, I was just in the middle of the hurricane. So Zach, after he's leaving, goes, come on, we're going to McKinley's. It's on me. And we just went down to this bar and just ordered, like, literally, like, 30 beers when we walked in on a tray and just continued the night. And uh, the next day, he actually calls me up. He goes, that went pretty good, don't you think? <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. And then, to his great fortune, the channel got purged and everybody was let go, and, and it was like a whole reset. And the people that run that metal show, that kind of stuff they love. If Zach came on... Zach's been on that metal show, and, and uh, he bought me a way too small vest, if anybody saw that episode. But, I mean, you know, he's been on, and they love that. They love that sort of craziness. So if he did the same sort of thing now, although he did, listen, you know, it, 
again, there's children in the room. I'm not going to say some of the things that went on, but it was pretty cool. So that was a very long story to answer your question that the only thing that went completely haywire in my TV history was the Zach interview, which is that Zach interview for the album Mafia that has never aired. Anybody else want a half-hour answer to one question?